Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. This that I'm studying is the Gore Brook. It's one of Manchester's lost waterways. The reason it's a lost waterway is because for much of its length it's culverted. It does run open at times, but like I say, there's a lot of culverts on this brook. And today in this video, we're gonna go into one of the more interesting culverts. So, come with me further upstream um, and we'll drop into one of the Gorebrook's culverts. Right, so just before we uh, venture down into the uh, darkness there, I'm going to take a look at uh, the tunnel here. It's quite a unique place this because we've got a tunnel over a culvert. So this is a, a brick arch culvert as you can see. We're going to walk along the top of the culvert that we're eventually going to drop down into and then walk along it in the water. <laughs> so let's just go and see where, how far this tunnel goes here. Yeah, unless you want to come. And I'll put a bit off here. here. So you can see we're walking actually above the culvert here. Like I say, I don't know if this exists anywhere else where you're in a tunnel within a tunnel. Stupid here a bit. Proper stupid. I don't think it goes that far. Oh, it does. It goes further than what I thought. It's a good job this doesn't go through, otherwise I'd be down, plunging down into the water below me. I'm not sure, you know, if this roof isn't coming in lower. It goes quite far, doesn't it? Are we getting to the end here? Possibly. Possibly at the end. Yeah, so we're completely filled in there now. Yeah, so we're filled in there now. Journey's end.
So, the slide of death. Why have I called it the slide of death? Well, I'm not being dramatic because I want to show you now where that tube comes out. Just take a look at this. You can probably hear it now already. Look at that. Not all fountains are in city squares. This is a beautiful piece of Victorian engineering. Let's go and take a closer look at it. It's wonderful, but from inside the culvert, as you've seen, the slide of death, it's deadly. 
At the moment, it's quite tame. I'm going to show you some footage when it's in full flow. You've seen the side there where the tube comes in. Imagine the pressure there to be able to force the water up. And that's where you don't want the faults go sliding down that tube because it's incredibly dangerous and there's no getting out. So why did they build it? Well, I've agonized over it and I'm not, I think these are my theories. It's a bit of a chunk on the brook. So the brook comes rushing down the culvert and at just, just further upstream, the brook has to drop down a level. So you've got this massive drop, as you'll see later. And I think it just puts the brake on the brook a little bit and probably a flood defense. Also, if you can see the pipe at the side, the brook's course has been altered slightly, I think. And it comes in from that way. And if it was left to run open, it would hit the side of the bank there and erode the field there, possibly someone's land. So they put this choke on it, it comes up, and it flows back along its natural course. That's my theory. Anyway, from this beautiful piece of Victorian engineering, let's drop back into the other piece of Victorian engineering. Let's go back into the culvert. In the show. No, it's like, well, I'll, I'll wait a bit. Just use that one.
Ya. Big guy in it. James, put the phone away! Put it away! Put the phone away! Put it down your neck! Can get the other the water Yeah, it's on the this is the big one. 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 If you just push yourself into the left, you know, that's it as much. You're the lightning, James. Yeah. Beautiful. I say, always keep riding out of the coming out of the I go first. Do it. Because it's certain to like that. It's the best thing. I've never ever located this lid. I think it's in that council bit where that derelict house is. Right. It's miles away. It's never nice to find yeah, it's, it's one of them things I've got in. Got some jacks up with the car that I've been looking today. Oh, yeah. Have you gone around the corner, James? Yeah, I'm going to go forward. Yeah. Strong tide, isn't it? Yeah. So, this culvert, why is it so long? And why is the brook buried down here for such a long distance? And where does this culvert go? Well, it's to do with the building of the Gorton Reservoirs. The Gorton Reservoirs replaced some of Manchester's earlier drinking water supplies. And when they built the Gorton Reservoirs, there was a bit of a conflict with the brook. I'll try and explain. So this is the Gorton Reservoirs, constructed in the 1820s. Now, the fascinating thing is I've got a map from the 1790s, and it shows the original reservoirs that supplied Manchester city centre. There was one uh, in Piccadilly, would you believe it? near where the old infirmary was. There was one at Shude Hill and there was one at Holt Town. 
So there you go, 1753, and this is an early map of Shude Hill. It's more like a sketch, to be honest with you. But at the top there, you see it says Water Pit. That was the Shude Hill Pits. Here they are again on a later map, and probably greater, uh, more expanded. This is at the bottom of Oldham Road in Manchester, uh, sort of the northern quarter area. The Shude Hill Pits, and I strongly suspect that those pits were fed by the River Tib, but I can't be definitely sure. Here we are in what was later to be known as Piccadilly Square. Um, you'll see there it says um, Infirmary Pond. Now that later became the gardens, Piccadilly Gardens, if you know that. And then here we go, a much later map, uh, mid-1800s. This is the Holt Town Reservoir, which we've come across before in the Medlock series, Medlock number four, and it had a link to the River Medlock. All these early uh, water supplies are now long since gone. They became entirely uh, inadequate, and so 1820s, these things were constructed. But there was a problem. The Gore Brook ran very near here, and as the Industrial Revolution progressed, it became absolutely filthy. One of the most polluted rivers or brooks in Manchester, according to the book by uh, Jeff Ashworth, The uh, Lost Rivers of Manchester. Now, of course, this wasn't always the case. If we go to Jeff Ashworth's book, The Lost Rivers of Manchester, we can see here, uh, page 39, uh, in 1790, Mr. Higson writes, At this time, otters were to be met within the Gore Brook. It is also abounding with trout, eels and minnows. Twelve years later, plenty of eels and trout in Gore Brook. Trees with bushes growing on its margin were also the resort of kingfishers. It sounds wonderful. But well, then a hundred years later, things had changed incredibly. Um, we, we read, um, A later report in the Manchester Courier tells of sewage matter in the river, chemical pollution from a pipe near Hyde Road Station, and the effluent from Gorton sewage works. The Gore Brook is now changed beyond recognition. It is contaminated and poses a problem to the reservoirs. So you've got an issue. You've got this filthy brook and you've got a drinking water supply. So, they needed to keep the brook out of the water supply and they went to massive, massive lengths to do that. Frederick Bateman, between 1876 and 1879, was charged with the task of culverting the Gore Brook and what a job he did. He built aqueducts, he built this really, really long culvert. So shortly I'm going to show you the extent of Frederick Bateman's work here around the Gorton Reservoirs. But for the moment, let's crack on with this journey. We've still got to make our way along this very, very long culvert and we've got some root infiltration here.
Is that alright? You think? Okay, so what is that tunnel on the left there? 
Well, that is another brook that joins us. Uh, it's the Dodge Leach Brook. Again, one of Manchester's lost waterways because I think this thing is, spends much of its time in culverts. Uh, so the Dodge Leach Brook joins us now. Um, and my only regret is that I wanted to have a bit of a look up there, to be honest with you. Um, and I just regret I didn't get much footage up there. But it is pretty wild in here and time was of the essence. We needed to get to where we wanted to get to, get the footage and get out. Many, many years ago when these brooks ran open, I don't doubt that they uh, they were in fields and they, they met with each other and it was all quite idyllic. But uh, there's a little bit of text there that you can read that explains that the Dodge Leach Brook will be taken by pipes and will join the Gore Brook. Okay, so like I say, this was the first time it actually got smelly. Now, before I talk about that watercourse to the right in the smaller tunnel, just take a look at the ceiling. Uh, this, this chamber is amazing. It's quite wide. And if you look at the brickwork on the ceiling there, it really is fantastic. The way it all comes together. Bit of craftsmanship there. Anyway, that smaller... Um, outfall to the right there that's a combined sewer overflow so it is coming from a sewer but it's also a brook that's the dick lane brook and that joins the gore brook at this point this piece of text from the lost rivers of manchester mentions the dick lane brook here it also describes how it spends most of its time underneath manchester road underneath the canal so it sounds like this thing rarely surfaces as well Now you will notice the walls are about to change from brick to concrete and this marks the spot where we enter one of the aqueducts. Now what on earth am I talking about? Allow me to explain, we'll just have to go outside for a moment. This is where we are in one of the aqueducts and these things are, they, they span the perimeter as I will show you of the Gorton Reservoirs and they carry the brook. So you can see what those resourceful Victorians did. They built aqueducts around the reservoir to keep the Gore Brook out of the drinking water. Absolutely fantastic. This was built between 1876 and 1879. I always imagine these things like early 1900s, but what we've been in today is much, much earlier. Stunning Victorian engineering. So here's the Gorton Reservoirs from the Google Earth view. And as you can see here, there's one of the aqueducts there, if you look at the cursor there. The root of the culvert then goes underneath the golf course, out into another aqueduct there, where the cursor is, and that's where I was just walking along. Proceeds again, under, all the way underneath the golf course there, all the way again, another aqueduct there, and then the final aqueduct at the top end of the reservoirs there. So you can see one hell of a long culvert. I've not even shown you the entire route, but you can see just by what I've shown you how long the culvert is, the work involved, the aqueducts, and the length to which they went to keep that dirty gore brook away from the drinking water. And it's now at that last aqueduct there that we must turn round and make the journey back. We have a feeling that it's raining outside, so time is of the essence. Okay, so this is as far as we're gonna come. So you've seen the main features now, you've seen the waterfalls are now absolutely fantastic and spectacular they are. We've come quite a long way. We need to head back now to the safety of the, uh, the exit. Well, on the way back, I want to show you the approach to the waterfalls from above because approaching from this way is quite uh, fantastic and uh, quite a sight to behold.
can see here just how near we are to the surface. It's not until we start dropping down the waterfalls that we go deeper underground. amazing if not very dangerous <laughs> I enjoyed it <laughs> used to be a lot um mm. you it, it? Well, yeah I couldn't get out <laughs> I couldn't get out with a bag on <laughs> so there you go one of the most interesting culverts I've ever been in, and I've been in quite a few. I'd like to thank Nick and Roy for bringing us down here and getting us in and out safely. I'd like to thank you for watching. So, from the Gore Brook, take care, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.